The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 8th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. Uh, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question and you can't call in, we've got your back. You can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside your Tiger's Den, our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a mixed bag. You've got the Dow trading up 73 and the NASDAQ up 7. The S&P just went slightly negative off two points. Russell's down 10. Semi's off 16. Tranny's down 37. You've got gold trading off a buck with silver up 11 pennies. Light sweet crude is up 29 cents. Natural gas is uh, basically flat. And the 30-year treasury off nine ticks right now. Print out 116. 13. Our leader in the clubhouse dollar wise is Broadcom up 23 bucks, nearly 2%. Arista Networks up uh, 18 bucks, 6%. Super Micro 14 bucks, a little over 1.5%. Mercado Libre 15 bucks, less than 1%. Charter Communications 12 bucks, nearly 5% there. To the downside, it is Inspire Medical Systems off 80 buckaroonies, 32 bucks. Yikes. HubSpot is down 21 bucks or 3%. Micro Strategy off 21 bucks, 1 and 6 tenths percent. Massimo Corp down 19 bucks, a 14 percent move there and Qualys is off uh, 17 bucks that is a 11 percent move I want to look at of course what you want to look at why don't we begin by taking a look at the equity future contracts out here so let's go take a look at the uh, ES the NQ the Dow and the Russell 2000 we'll go to those white background charts and here you'll see that the price has attained the one-to-one -one price objective level inside that ES mini and that was up at the uh, 5227 level now the next expansion area should price not form some type of bearish reversal candle would be up in the 5278 range the 0.786 retracement to 5254 so we would say 5254 to 5278 could be its next upside price target if we do get a bearish reversal candle then price will pull back and test support and support right now is at 5140 as both its oscillator and change line and the top of its daily profile if we take a look at the daily nq the daily nq also forming its A to B, okay, when I say forming, uh, achieving its one-to-one -one price objective, which was at 18222 um, its next stop to the upside would take us up to the 18.449 level, the 0.786. Retracement of the entire move is at 18.367. So that would be the zone on a further move higher, 18.367 to 18.449. If we do get a bearish reversal candle, that'll generate a sell the D point or a Gartley sell pattern. And then price would pull back to test support. The first level of support would be the top of that profile at 18.089. And below that, it would be that oscillator and change line currently printed about 17.863. 
on to the Dow equity future contract. It's got a little bit of a ways to go. Its actual price objective is 32,904. The actual high, there was a nice shooting star candle that formed yesterday, and that high was at uh, 39,127. So 127 versus, uh, what did I say, uh, 204. You know, it's about 100, it's not 100 points, but it's up towards that level out there. So I don't believe that the Dow equity future contract has completed its A to B equals CD pattern. Maybe that's why the Dow is still trading higher. It needs to get up there and at least complete that one to one. Now, when it gets up towards that 39,204, or should it, that's also the 0 0.68 retracement level of its move. So again, if we got a bearish reversal candle, we'd have Gartley sell patterns. And inside the Russell 2000, when we take a look at the equity future contract, it did not form a Gartley sell pattern yesterday. However, the Russell 2000 cash index chart did. The cash indice formed a bearish shooting star candle, uh, and that sets the top there. But we don't have that topping signal here inside of the equity future contract. But it has attained the one-to-one -one level. Its next move to the upside would take you to 2121. But at 2114, you've got your TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So that's what's going on when we take a look at the uh, uh, the equity future contracts for that time frame. I'm going to switch over. I don't have these charts here populated, but we'll just wait a few moments for that to do that. And I'm going to take a look at a five-hour time frame chart. Now, not each of the five-hour charts had the same message, but these are worth paying attention to out here. So if you give me a moment, uh, and you don't really have much of a choice here. I don't have much of a choice. I wish I could just say zap. It's there, and then we'd be good. Uh, but that's not the case. Now, on the five-hour chart, again, they're still populating here. I believe we had um, – uh, I don't even want to say what I believe. Not that I want to say what I believe. I just don't recall exactly what I don't want to get this wrong. So now we take a look at the daily time frame. I'm going to go ahead and expand this out. Now, the last TD9 count top out here, and that went ahead and completed on uh, 1,700 hours back on May the 3rd. That pattern failed. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart out here, the blue um, the blue levels – so i got to I got to actually shut this one down here. The um, – I'm going to make this – I guess I did make it red. I have a blue one there, too. I don't know. Oh, because it formed that wave number seven top. So the, the if you take a look at those blue arrows out there, you'll see TD9 count tops and bottoms. And it really has worked very well uh, for the five-hour time frame. We did get this one that failed out here. It failed at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on April the 29th. But when it was doing that, it was forming a wave number seven count, letter G. So it did, it did bypass one. Um, topping pattern went on to the next and then obviously went down and formed that TD9 count bottom. Now here is a new, now here's the TD9 count that also failed. Let me just uh, decorate this chart properly here. I know I was missing something. There we go. So this one failed right here. This is the one that formed, it completed at 1700 hours. That's one I was referring to earlier. Uh, that was on May the 3rd out there. And that was, uh, that was uh, held up for maybe about 10, 15 hours or so. But by the time May 6th, at 9 a.m. showed up, that pattern was negated. Well, now we've got a new one, and that new one formed yesterday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We also now have a Rhodesman. No, we do not have a Rhodesman to indicator signal. No, we do. We have a Rhodesman to indicator top out here. And price is now trading below. So I see price did close below the bottom of that profile, but it's back above it. So it says it was a false breakdown. Interesting. So we do have a top. We get that uh, really two tops now. It doesn't make it better than one top, by the way. Um, uh, for the June contract for the five-hour time frame. If, in fact, uh, price get, get, uh, closes for two consecutive sessions below 51.99, what well, 51.99, 50 to be exact, then we'd be looking to move to 51.52 out there. And that's what's going on. We take a look at the ES Mini. The NQ has got a TD9 count, as well as a Rhodesman. No, it just has a TD9 count top. Its level of support is at 17.883. You've got a wave number seven top inside the Dow Equity Future contract. So far here, support is held. That's the bottom of its profile, and that's at the 38,582 level. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. One of our dinners uh, alerted me. That's uh, Mr. Z, John, inside the Tiger's Den at the 30-minute charts this morning. We're working their magic. Uh, you've got the 30-minute time frame charts up on our screen. We can see TD9 counts that uh, completed as the, cash, as the cash market was opening for the ES Mini. That was at 930. We then saw a rally. Now, that rally ran right into resistance where it should. I'm not showing the chart. Yeah, I am. Um, ran right into resistance where it should, which is that TD9 count breakdown level. And that's in the 5215, uh, 50 to 5215.75 level. So, um, you know, right now price is still above that profile level, but if price does pull back, uh, support would be that TD9 count bottom as well as the new bullish structured profile that is formed. That's between 5191 and 5193. Yeah, TD9 count bottoms on the NQ that formed as well as inside the Russell 2000. The NQ also running into that TD9 count breakdown resistance <laughs> level out there. Let's go to our first caller. It is Michael in Niagara Falls. Michael, thanks so much for calling and holding. How are you today? Oh, thank you for taking my call. My pleasure. What's happening in Niagara Falls? How's the weather up there? Huh? It's it's there. It's there. All right. Oh, is it's it there, warm? Yeah. Is it? Uh, is I mean, it's there along. It's there along with all the uh, the, the illegal migrants. <laughs> that uh, skipped out on New York City, and they decided to come to Canada. And they really? Parked their, they parked themselves in Niagara Falls and all the one-star motels. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And the Canadian taxpayer is footing the bill. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. I get you. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, well, that's, so, sorry to bring that up. Sorry to bring that up. Rally. What, what, what does he want to look at? It's a stealth rally in the XLU. Yeah, nice rally. Yeah, it, it caught me by surprise here. I'm trying to figure out why. Pourquoi? 
in French. Why? Well, the, the why piece of it, I don't think I can uh, come up with. But what I can do is tell you, at least from a price standpoint, what shareholders believe is going on out here. And uh, this had formed uh, back on uh, uh, back on the trading day of uh, February 9th. That had confirmed uh -huh. erosion to indicator bottom. And it's been really rallying ever since. It did make a TD9 count topping pattern, and that just pulled price back to support. We're looking at a daily time frame at Sausage and Change Line. What's going on right now, Michael, is an A to B equals CD pattern. So I've drawn in the A to B pattern on the daily chart. We're going to simply move this along to the C point. And what we'll see is price yesterday attained that one-to-one -one price level. But what I would have you notice here is see how price along the C to D leg is way on the left side of that angle of, of that C to D line, that tells us right then and there uh, that this should do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Now, on my other charts out here, I'm going to put in the XLU. Uh, I'm not going to change them, just simply so I can give you what that next price objective is for the daily time frame. And then we'll go ahead and, well, if you have any questions there, I'll, I'll answer those questions. And if not, we'll go ahead and move on to the, uh, uh, to the weekly time frame. Now, in this case here, See where I go. I went back to October of 2023. There's another one. This one is in 2020. So let me first give you this A to B. I see a couple A to B equals C dependence, quite frankly. And we might switch over to my other charts. But right now, on the one that I've drawn in here, what I'm going to do is give you the price objectives there. And that first price objective, as I mentioned, we hit yesterday. The next price objective, Michael, is 71.38. Now, because of this pattern, if you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would give you a sell signal. That sell signal, you know, would be a sell the D point pattern. But short of that, price should continue to move higher. We also happen to be in uh, bar number six of a TD9 count. So that says you've got at least not till next week would this potentially generate that type of a topping pattern. So on the daily time frame, I would just continue to watch for a bearish reversal candle. It's short of that price should continue moseying along up towards that 71 38 area michael before i switch over and take a look at a weekly or a monthly chart do you have any questions about this chart i'm looking at the fundamental reasons for this is this like a late late stage rally indicator like like we're coming near the end of the equity rally in the s p and 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 they rotate money into the xlu which is defensive can, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I, I wish I, I wish I did. I believe the XLP, the consumer discretionary sector, may also be at a new all-time high. I think it might have done that yesterday. Let me take a quick peek in there. And Michael, what I would have to do, or what somebody would have to do, no, it didn't make its new all-time high or anything like that. It just a form. It actually what it did. The XLP went ahead and confirmed an A to B pattern, A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And uh, that's got a price objective of 78 and a quarter. But I don't know with regard to rotation. If you're asking, is this the is this a sign of the end of the rally? I've never done that study to know the answer to that. Um, and that's what somebody would really have to line that up. You know, the XLU, you know, with the S&P and so forth. And I just I don't have the ability to do that as we while we're on the air. That's for sure. And it would okay. take a little while to do that. OK, so you're saying that your upside target is going to be less than the previous high from from the week of December the 19th and December the 12th you're thinking less than 74 well, I will tell you that at 71.89 on a weekly time frame, you've got the TD9 count breakdown resistance. And before you and I uh, got on the phone with each other, we were looking at 30-minute time frame charts that showed a nice TD9 count bottom, and our price stopped right at those t at that TD9 count breakdown resistance. So that doesn't mean that it'll be a top when it gets there, but it is a battle. Wouldn't be surprised to see price get up there. And uh, it depends what pattern might be going on at that time. So the weekly chart also has the A to B equals CD pattern. It, too, needs a bearish reversal candidate confirm a top but yes i did give you the price targets on the daily time frame of 71.38 and on the weekly time frame 71.89 is a resistance uh -huh. level so that's where i would go okay. to next before i tried to go higher than that not that it can't i'm just looking at where's that next battle now when we look at a monthly time frame chart michael that's a very right hand screen you can see that yeah. price is now trading above the top of its profile now it's early in the month but uh, it's a positive sign to be trading above 68.73. And if it closes above that on a monthly basis, um, it too has an A to B equals CD pattern. And this may rally even further. So is this the sign wow. of the top because this is the late stage rally? I don't know the answer to that question. I haven't seen anybody in Tiger's Den um, uh, uh, chime in here. So I don't know that anybody no. here has really done that kind of a study out there. But it's a, you know, it's a good question. Interesting question for sure. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. 
You bet. And thanks so much for calling. That was Michael in Niagara Falls. Now, um, let's do this here. Let's get to uh, some questions that have come in and would love more. Right now, we've got, looks like, two, four, six of them. And uh, the first one's coming in from Brent in Martinez, California. And he wants to take a look at ticker symbol B-I-R-D. Now, in uh, 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 Bird, um, uh, Brent took a, a small starter position in this. So when we take a look at the daily time frame, uh, boy, what the heck is Bird? All birds. What a weird looking uh, monthly chart out there. Okay, let's open up the daily out here and weekly, really. So if we take a look at the uh, daily. Certainly, I see A to B equals CD patterns to the downside. And I see two bullish reversal candles, one that formed on April 16th, and that identified the bottom. And that was tested uh, back on May the 2nd. That formed a bull sash candle. So you know where the buyers are at. They're certainly trying to defend the area of uh, 54 cents out there. Yesterday was promising, and it still may be promising, in that price closed above the top of its daily profile, Brent, and that was at 65 cents. We're, we're a penny below that right now. You'd love to see a second consecutive close above 65 cents. If you get that, then on a daily time frame, in addition to the buy the D point bottom, you have a profile change in trend signal. So we come back to this break. Let's try to figure out where that could take you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Uh, folks, hey, uh, Michael, uh, Tom was kind enough to chime in inside the Tiger's Den and uh, and answer your question. And and the answer to your question, uh, according to Tom, is uh, that um, if uh, rates are going down, you'll see the uh, XLU moving higher. Now, what I did is I put in my correlation chart for us to take a look at. Now, I don't know why why the TNX have only got data through April 5th. That's weird. That is really weird out there. But um, actually, so since I don't have, since this is giving me a data issue, I'll come back to this. So that's your question. I'm just simply trying to put up that correlation to show you that inverse relationship, which is really what it shows right now. This is an average over a five-day period out there. So I'll try to get that chart. If I don't get it to you today, uh, back up on the uh, screen to figure out what's going on here. We'll certainly take a look at it on uh, Monday. In the meantime, let's go speak with John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. And thanks for holding. How are you today? Hey, Steve, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call. My pleasure, as always. You want to take a look at Goldilocks. So tell yes, us what, how, merge, what, what you're doing, how I can help. question for you, Steve. Um, yeah. Just by way of background, last Friday, uh, working with Larry Pesavento, observed the low last uh, Friday down at tw uh, 2285. I think that was a June futures low. Yes be a butterfly to a bottom pattern. Uh, in subsequent uh, trading, that has proved to be the case, at least on the short term. So from that low at 2285, uh, the gold futures rallied Friday and then Monday and now have pulled back Tuesday and Wednesday. And my question to you, Steve, is given your work and your tools, is there anything that leads you to conclude uh, the GCM4 contract is likely to launch imminently? That's my very yeah. specific question. If you could help me with that, I'd be much obliged. And could I take your discussion of that off air? Absolutely, as always. John, thanks so much for your question, and I think you'll like the answer. So now what we've done here is I put up the uh, weekly time frame chart for gold. And John's specific question, as you heard, was, is there any chance that that low that T and Larry had identified? I don't know what the time frame it was on that butterfly. I don't think it was the daily time frame, but that doesn't matter. Is that possible if that was the next low? And the answer to that question is absolutely, positively, yes. And why is that? If we are in a bull market, which I believe that we are inside of uh, Goldilocks, I mean a major bull market that we haven't really completely seen, um, what we'll see is we'll see retracements typically last, John, for two weeks. And that's what yesterday, that's, that's what last week did, was it was a two consecutive week move to the downside. Now, if, if it was to be a third consecutive week to the downside, that does not mean that the bullishness is gone. But to go to coincide with what you are looking for, uh, then I would look to this weekly time frame chart as that signal that we're likely to rally from here. And we're likely to rally for at least two weeks and maybe beyond that. Now, the reason why I believe uh, this is the weekly time frame chart uh, so let me put up the monthly time frame chart that we are at a major, major beginning of a new bull run inside of gold really takes us back to this monthly chart out there. And many of you have, have heard me identify this in the past. Now, I need, in this chart here, I need to get a little bit more data. So if you give me a moment, we'll do that. We'll take more than 5,000 days. Let's take uh, 10,000 days out here. And uh, what we're going to look at is we're going to take a look at the last major uh, bull run that took us into the highs in 2011. So as I pull this chart back, what you're going to notice out here, and this is on a monthly basis, you're going to see all of those pullbacks were two bar consecutive pullbacks before price went ahead and motored on. So now let's take us forward to where we're at today. Give me a moment here. Why is this working? I'm trying to load the data. So we had this on the monthly time frame. Back in the month of uh, February 2024, that was a two-bar pullback. 
I believe that that was really not that this was the low or trying to identify the low. I believe that that is likely to have been the beginning of the next major bull run in gold to the upside. So let's see if, in fact, this week's or last week's low holds and that price moves higher out there. And that, John, would be my answer to you with regard to your specific question on Goldilocks. So I hope that helped you out. I hope that made a lot of sense out there. Uh, just as long as we have the gold charts up here, the interesting thing about the monthly time frame chart, and we're talking about the month of April, is that actually generated a, a Rogeman Dim Indicator uh, top. It did it by generating that uh, bearish shooting star candle. Now, my experience with regard to bearish shooting star candles out here is that they either work or they don't. And what I mean by that is, and this is kind of interesting to go along with the uh, um, to our discussion here on gold is that in this case here, it should have worked and price should be pushing lower. Now, the month is not over, but instead of pushing lower, we're pushing higher out there. It still has resistance at the high of last month with that Rhodes Mintum indicator top. If we look at the weekly time frame, it has a TD9 count top. This is a June contract we're looking at. So if I'm correct in that a new bull run has started, we can see that even here with the weekly TD9 count top, price pulled back and tested and rejected a key level of support. That was that green oscillator and change line. So if gold does close above on a weekly basis, 24.4880, that's on the June contract, that's going to negate that signal and tell so that we continue to move higher on the daily time frame gold is just simply trading with inside its uh, profiles out there as well as its TDI account breakout level so uh, that's the discussion on gold hope that uh, helped you out hope that helped everybody out there and at least uh, Stevie's thinking and why based upon the uh, charts so now let's go uh, back to bird out there I don't think I finished up bird uh, that was for Brent de Martinez California so let me get back to a uh, bird I was able to modify the chart so I could actually see what the weekly and the monthly charts were doing and here if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart Brent you already know this I'm sure is bar number eight completed last week and that was low of the pattern the problem could be out here is that if you want a TD nine count bottom pattern to form on the weekly time frame price must close the week below 62 cents and you're at 65 right now what happens if it closes above 62 cents well the TD nine count bottom pattern will go away on a weekly basis is there anything else that Stevie can find not really no. And you're trading inside a, a bullish weekly profile out there. So, you know, ideally you get that pattern. What happens if you don't? Well, on a weekly time frame, you're dealing with a bullish structured profile and a close above um, 62 cents should take it to 75 out there. So, Brett, that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Bird out there. Hope that helped you out. And thanks so much for waiting and playing the game. Hey, Stevie, would you take a look at that instrument for me? Well, let's continue playing that game, and let's play it for Dan inside the Tiger's Den, who would love to take a look at TLT. And on the TLT, uh, he's looking for an entry point. Now, from a daily time frame out here, what I would really do is go take a look at the 30-year Treasury, which we're going to do, but still take a look at the TLT charts. If these were the only things that I had in order to try to make that to help Dan with that decision, I would say that uh, right now today, because of the scap to the downside, you're going to get a sell the D point pattern. So let's take a look at that right out there. So in other words, we're getting a potential signal of a top. Now the day's not over, so I don't know what the candle will look like today. And if it rallies and it closes that little gap out there, then we will not have a falling window for that gap to the downside. So let's just do this, uh, folks. I'm going to uh, hear the music in the background. That means we're getting ready to go to a commercial break. Steve's having trouble here cutting and pasting. That's a terrible thing. But we'll be right back. We'll finish looking at the 30-year Treasury and the TLT. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. I believe that uh, Dan had exited his position yesterday based upon the 65-minute TLT chart which had completed a, a TD9 count top at uh, 1245. That's my recollection, and it's a chart that had popped up on my screen out there. Now what we could, and if that's the case here, uh, Dan, now what we can take a look at what's transpired since that TD9 count top. Well, what's transpired is uh, price gap down this morning, and it's trading below its uh, uh, profile support level. So again, if we were only focused on the TLT, the answer would be 89.67 could or should be a buy area if in fact price gets down there on the daily time frame because we do have this little island top out here this little gap to the downside that was created price would pull back towards 89.54 so we got 89.54 the top of its profile and 89.67 so those are the numbers for the TLT let's take a quick peek in at the 30 year itself and see what kind of signals we can get off of it there I use different time frames just simply because it's a futures contract but I uh, should be oh didn't I pull that up Oh, son of a gun. Oh, you know what I did, Dan? Because you're short term. I went ahead and uh, put that on the uh, day trading schedule of charts out here. So what, I, what kind of what I refer to it as. So let's pull up those charts. Now we should see the 30 year. OK, great. So the 30 year, the closest thing that I had on that 65 minute would be a 60 minute chart out here. So this is the idea that we'd see the 30 year continue to move lower. Well, turns out, Dan, that the 30, the 30 year on a two hour time frame chart is going to go ahead and uh, complete its uh, TD9 count bottom pattern at 12 noon, uh, about 17 minutes from now. So this should at least rally further. And that first rally should take you about 116.18. If price can close above 116.18, you're then looking to move up towards the 116.20-ish area out there. So we get different signals here. Now, if I go to a shorter term time frame, a 10 minute, uh, 10 minutes got a uh, TD9 count top out there and resistance up at the top of its profile. That is at the 116.16 area out there. If price were to close above that, that would suggest that this is going to rally even further out there. So different signals, different information. We take a look at how the 30-year is trading versus the TLT. The TLT on that short-term time frame, even the daily. So the daily uh, chart on the uh, TLT has got a, a top. Uh, if we take a look at the 30-year uh, treasury, not the case at all. Now, what the 30-year treasury is running into is resistance. My recollection, it's just simply a trend line that we can take. I think this is it. Yeah. 
So basically, that's your that's your resistance level on the daily time frame. But we do not have any kind of a, a topping signal for the daily like we did on the TLT. So hopefully that information helps you out and I didn't confuse you too much. And if I did, my apology. Lee would like to retake a look at uh, URA, uranium out there, see if there's any kind of new targets. And the reason that we're, oh, perfect. Thanks, Dan. The reason that we're taking a look at this, yesterday when we looked at this was uh, testing its uh, swing point on a daily time frame. And it, uh, that's the swing point from back here on the trading day of February the 1st. And price actually tested it but it stayed with inside there. But it did generate that bearish shooting star candle. I did see your email uh, last night out there, and yeah, you were right. And obviously, that confirmed a road momentum indicator um, top out there. But right now, what price is doing, it is back inside its profile. It's a second. It was a gap to the downside, so kind of a second uh, bearish reversal signal out there. But what price would need to do on uranium, Lee, is close below, let's call it 3046. 3057 is what it shows on my screen as the daily oscillator and change on it. Price moves lower, that number is going to move lower. And the center of that profile is at 3046. It is a slightly bearish structure daily profile. And if price were to close below 3046, that would tell you and I it should target the 2836 level. So that's on the daily time frame to the downside. If we look at a uh, weekly time frame, it's too early in the week. Right now it's a shooting star candle. But we are up at that resistance. Well, we talked about that yesterday. You were up at the resistance of the weekly, of the uh, monthly time frame, and you were going into a swing point before. So I think you were just looking for those new targets. And right now, I think it's that 3046 area where you would be watching. So I hope that that helps. And uh, uh, let's take a look at this again tomorrow or the following day, whatever I can do to help you out. Nicholas is in San Francisco. And Nicholas would like to take a look at ticker symbol A, Alcoa out here. We take a look at this. This is trading inside a gigantic daily profile. It is bullish in structure. When I say gigantic, well, uh, the bottom of it is at 130.09. The top is at 145.86. Yeah, that's a pretty decent um, profile out there. It is bullish in structure because the center is printed out at 133.16. We're well above that. We're above the oscillator and change line. I see a series of higher lows over the last six or seven trading sessions out there. So, Nicholas, I don't have anything that I'm looking at on a daily time frame to suggest that that's going to stop. Where's its price target? Well, it would be that 145.86 level out there. Now, we probably in Alcoa can also put in an A to B equals CD pattern out here. Um, can we? Yeah, you know, if you're going to really do it, really do it right, it would be, this would be the swing point, April the 24th out there. Volume was 1.5 million shares. As it was passed, it was passed with 1.6 million. So here's your A to B equals CD pattern. We'll just draw that in. I don't know what we've attained or achieved so far. But I'll just simply go ahead and move this over to the C point, which you can see. Oh, I'm going to try to do that. Come on. Come on. Would you work for me? Come on. Shoot. Don't know what's going on here, folks. Sorry about that. I'd say I need new batteries in my mouse, but it doesn't use batteries. Well, it's batteries, but it's plugged in, so that's not it. Okay, so on Alcoa, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you the data. Uh, so if you give me a moment, I'll get the A to B equals CD pattern going on my other. Oh, so this is Allegiant, not Alcoa. AA, I'm sorry. So with regard to Allegiant, it's A to B equals CD pattern, which we now know is a confirmed A to B equals CD. Yeah, the actual one-to-one -one price target, and it was only a 49% retracement, is going to take you up to the top of that profile, the 145.86 area. It's actually 145.67. So it appears to me that that is where Allegiant is headed to. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. This is where you're running into a little bit of trouble. And that is that price is trying to get back inside its weekly profile. In order to do that, it needs to close above 142.25. Now, if it can do that, then it should move up to that 144 level. It doesn't get you to the 148. Well, it gets you to 145, close to the 145. The issue you've got at the 144.58 level out here, Nicholas, is that is a bullish structured weekly profile. And if this is only a counter trend move, and I don't know that it is, if this is only a counter trend move, then what we would see is price run into resistance at 144.58, right to the penny. I'm just kidding you with regard to the penny. And then you'd see price pull back. But right now, Alcoa looks like it wants to get up to that 145-ish area out there. So hope that helps you out. You also want to take a look at AMGEN. AMGN is the ticker symbol. And here, what do we have? We've got price, a new profile formed yesterday. You had a big gap to the upside. I don't have any kind of a, a topping signal or anything, but you do have a very large gap out there.
And so I don't know what its real intent is here. Does it want to fulfill that gap? Does it want to get back to its oscillator and change line? Uh, we are trading above yesterday's high, and we did not take out yesterday's low. So more likely than not, this rally holds today, and maybe it extends itself. The weekly chart is bullish. It's trading above profile, and it's green oscillator and change line. And the same thing for the monthly time frame. And actually, the monthly time frame is neutral because it did have a roadsman to mitigator top. But price is trading above resistance level, so it's suggesting that it wants to rally further out there. So I hope that helps you out. Now, when we come back from this break, we've got uh, three symbols to look at in a short period of time. So I'll be very quick if I can. And we're going to take a look at Procter & Gamble for John in Milwaukee. We're going to take a look at Shop for Greg and XPEV. For GTE. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Uh, for John in uh, Milwaukee, he wanted me to put up the quarterly chart for Procter & Gamble. That's what we have up on our screen right now. And uh, so I don't see anything here other than the fact that price is trading above uh, the prior quarter's high, it's trading above profile resistance. So this is suggesting it certainly wants to try to take out that all-time high, that all-time high being 165.35 out there. It's trying to do it right now. We're 165.73. The question is, will it close above that area? Your question is, where is the next buy? Today's bar number seven. This is likely to form a TD9 count top 
between tomorrow, Thursday, and next Tuesday. If, in fact, that happens, prices then pull back to support, and support would be that green oscillator and change line, unless there's some other profile that forms between now and then. So I'd say the buy would be somewhere around 163.74. That would be a momentum move that you would be looking at because there would be no pattern. It would just be price pulling back to support. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, John, with that, Greg wants to take a look at Shopify. And Shopify fell out of bed. And Shopify has a weekly A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. We're trading below a new weekly profile that formed last week. We're trading below the monthly oscillator and change line. Uh, this is suggesting that this certainly wants lower price. On the daily time frame, this thing gapped down pretty big. And it has an A to B equals CD pattern. It looks to me like what this wants to do is target the 59.89 level. And 59.89 is where Shopify broke out uh, back on the trading day of uh, November 10th of 2023 out there. So that's what I see. We take a look at uh, Shopify. Is there anything else out here? Nothing else that I see. The next area of support, by the way, on a weekly time frame is down at 45.50. And on a monthly time frame, it'd be between 39.94 and 45.38. So it does look like Shopify wants to head lower. And then finally, we'll finish off the day taking a look at XPEV out here. XPEV is trading below its daily profile, but close below 784. It's likely to move lower. That move lower target could be 695. That is where it broke out from. The way you'd get a confirmation of that, you need to see price to start trading below 771. That's the weekly red oscillator and change line. If it closes below that, I would say you're headed to 695 out there. Folks, thanks so much for joining me on a wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific day, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care. Be safe out there.